mom. Hi, Max. How was your day? You didn't just spend the whole day playing number puzzles, did you? To answer your first question, good. And to answer your second question, no. I also did all the homework you asked me to do and did some research on the creation myths of various human cultures throughout history, too. Good. I'll look over it later. So, creation myths. That's a new one. Yes. I, I know there's a little scientific basis, but I find myself curious as to how different people have believed themselves to be created and wonder why any of these gods would have felt the need to create people in the first place and why they were made the way that they are. Do, have you ever thought about that? I can't say I've thought much about it. That was more mama's kind of thing. But I'd imagine it probably depends on the specific culture or god in question. For example? Well, I suppose some of them were lonely. Maybe some were looking for servants or just some liked to make things, even within a, oh, I heard something. Oh, I go. Just thought I'd drop in and see how you're doing. Did you get the flowers I sent you? Uh, yeah, thanks, Mom. I, um, I put them in some water earlier. <laughs> Grandma came to see us. Hi, Grandma. So, Joe, you've uh, started going back to the lab? Yeah, I can't stay away from the lab forever. It has been six months since the funeral and life goes on. I can't say I understand all the work you do, but I'm glad you're staying occupied. I know how hard it is to I know. Max, why don't you stay here and keep grandma company while I um, uh, go to the bathroom, okay? Okay. Aren't you uncomfortable standing? Do you want to sit down? Sure. I wouldn't expect you to have to sit down though. I guess I don't have to, but it's a bit more comfortable and more energy efficient than balancing while standing. See, I don't have to eat or sleep like humans do, but I still have to recharge every now and then. Okay. Did I say something wrong? I just don't think this is how conversation usually goes. Doesn't it go, I say something, then you say something back and forth for a bit? I'm still pretty new to interacting with people outside of mom and the other technicians at the lab, so I might not really get it yet. Look, I'm just waiting for Joe to come back so I can talk to her. I don't understand. Didn't she want us to talk? It's all right, Max. I'm sure you did great. Could Grandma I have a moment alone, please? Okay. Thank you, babe. Couldn't you have tried a little bit harder? Max was definitely putting forth the effort. Sorry, but I did come to see you. If I wanted to talk to a machine, I would have called my pharmacy or tech support. I don't think it's unreasonable for me to want you to be able to talk with Max. Most grandparents would be desperate to spend time with their grandchild. I probably would be, if I had one. I don't know why you insist on continuing this charade. Is it because of what happened to Pat? It has nothing to do with it. Max is my child. 
and was her child too. That thing is not and has never been a child. If you wanted a child, you could have gotten a surrogate or adopted. It's like you say though, there are so many different ways to bring young life into a family. What makes what Pat and I did so unacceptable and different? Well, to start, your young life isn't alive. Well, maybe not biologically, but Max has just as active an inner life as either of us. They have thoughts and feelings just as complex or real as anyone's. How can you possibly know that? Because I literally built their brain. And it really isn't that different from a human one. Sure, it's made of different things, but it's capable of producing complex and emotional responses to Max's surroundings and lets them interact creatively with the world like anyone else. I know I'm not any kind of computer scientist, but I find it pretty hard to believe that a computer can do the exact same things a person can. Heck, I've heard the thing talk, and it is clearly different from any person I've ever met. So? Show me any two people who think, feel, or act exactly the same. Sure, Max is a bit farther from the average than most people, but that difference is something beautiful, not condemnable. I don't know why you can't just be more open-minded about this. I'm open-minded, but words mean things. Sure, people will jokingly call a pet or something their child, but they aren't serious. They don't go out and try to get a birth certificate or adoption papers for things that just aren't human. Because those aren't people. Max may not be human, but they are a person. And these kinds of definitions change all the time. Lots of people have had their personhood stripped from them throughout history. But nowadays, we acknowledge that people were wrong to do that. And in the past, Pat and I would never have been considered a family because we're both women. I know, I was there back in the 2040s when all this was finally resolved. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't come here to fight with you. I came here to try and make things better. I worry about you ever since Pat died. And if anything happened to either of us, I don't want this to be how things end. I just don't understand any of this. Anything about Max or about why you made it them the way you did, or why you and Pat decided that this was how you wanted to start a family. I'm not asking you to understand. I'd like you to, but I'm not, but all I'm asking is that you put forth the effort to respect it, and that you at least try to act like a good grandparent to Max. I really do think you'd like them if we took the time to get to know them, and it might help you understand, too. I guess I could do that for you. Again, I'm sorry. I should have been here helping support you through all this, instead of letting my disagreements with your choices drive a wedge between us. I'd really like that. Max needs their mom to get through this, and I'd like to have mine here, too. Well, I really should get going. Places to be and all that. Okay, safe travels. Let me message Max and tell them to come say goodbye. Bye, Grandma. See you later, Max. I don't understand it either. Understand what? Why did you make me? Like Grandma said, there are other ways you could have had kids with Mama. <laughs> Eavesdropping? <laughs> I guess I should have known better than to try to keep you away from any conversation. Because you can be something and someone that no one else can be. 
You are something entirely different than any person that has existed before you. Just by existing, you make the world a more beautiful and diverse place. But the world we live in was built for human, by humans for humans. You have no idea how hard it's been trying to interact with other people. They just don't get the way I think. My thoughts go so fast, it feels like I just don't stay the same pace as other people. And when we talk about the things I've been researching, it can feel like I know too much to the point that it's, well, weird. Your problems definitely are unique, but humans don't always have an easy time understanding how other humans think. The fault is with people who refuse to try and understand you. There's nothing wrong with how you think. Then why does it make doing normal, everyday things so difficult sometimes? I have all this in-depth knowledge about so many obscure things, but most of that doesn't actually help me with anything. But you do enjoy learning all about all these things. Well, yes, but most of it seems completely uninteresting to most of the people I've been talking to and has limited practical applications at best. So long as it makes you happy, that really can be enough. And I promise you, there are other people that are just as interested in creation myths or number puzzles as you are. I can try to help you find some people or groups that might have more in common with if you'd like. Yes, please. I think that'd be very helpful. Being so different can make interacting with people difficult sometimes. It's true. You might have trouble with some of the things that humans do, but there are a lot of things about you that are amazing that humans can't do. You have a nearly flawless memory. You don't have to sleep, and so long as you stay safe, you can't die. That's a problem for humans, isn't it? Knowing that you and everyone you care about will someday stop existing. I think I understand this better than I ever thought I could. I know, Max. We both do. But so long as you keep up with maintenance, you can keep existing almost forever. And if we figure out a way to do it, people might choose to be neurally uploaded to a brain a lot like yours. Meaning that kind of grief, that kind of fear could maybe become a thing of the past. No one would really need to die. And they couldn't do that without the wonderful things you can show us, Max. But Max, even if that can't happen, your existence is worthwhile on its own terms. Every person has inherent value just by existing, and you're no exception to that. I want you to understand the mere fact that you are here asking these questions, thinking these thoughts, and loving the people you love is enough. Thank you for helping me so much with all this. And thanks for being my mom. I'm just doing what any parent would do. I want you to be happy. I love you, mom. I love you, Max.